Hi, we have seen the propagation of electromagnetic waves in vacuum. Let's now discuss how the propagation gets modified inside a material medium. A dielectric media is characterized by bound charges. That is, they do not contain free electric charges and therefore they do not conduct electric current. Air, glass, mica and paraffin wax are examples for a dielectric matter. The electric charge that is given to a dielectric remains fixed in the region of application in contrast to conductors where a charge is immediately spreads over the surface. In the absence of an external electric field, the dipoles inside the dielectric orient in random directions. They arrange themselves in a closed chain and hence the net dipole moment will be zero. As we apply an external electric field, the chains are broken and the dipoles align themselves parallel to the direction of the applied electric field. Now we say that the material has been polarized. Note that the electric field that is generated by a polarized material is due to its bound charges. And if free charges are also present, the total electric field produced by the system is due to both bound as well as free charges. We have formulated the Maxwell's equations taking into consideration the free charges present in vacuum. We need to write a similar equation in material media that does not include the effect of bound charges. That is, somehow we need to absorb the effect of the bound charges and write the Maxwell's equations in media taking into consideration only the free charges. Let's see how. Let's consider the Gauss's law which is del dot E equal to rho over epsilon zero. A material media is characterized by both bound as well as free charges. Therefore rho becomes rho b plus rho f and the Gauss's law becomes rho b plus rho f over epsilon zero. So this is equal to 1 over epsilon 0, then the equation for the bound charges rho b can be written as del dot p and then rho f that is del dot epsilon 0 e plus p equal to rho f. We shall introduce a new term called the electric displacement vector d and write this equation as del dot e equal to rho f. Hence, by introducing a new term d, we have conveniently hidden the contribution of additional charges in Gauss's law. That is, d has absorbed the effect of the bound charges. And the Maxwell's equation is now free of the effect of bound charges. And similar arguments hold for currents and magnetic fields also. We shall write the Ampere's law del cross B equal to mu zero j plus mu zero epsilon zero dou E over dou T. This is again equal to mu zero times jf plus jb plus jp plus mu zero epsilon zero dou e over dou t. Here jf is the free current density, jb is the bound current density and jp is the polarization current density. And this equation can be written as del cross B equal to mu zero 
times Jf plus del cross M plus dou P over dou T plus mu zero epsilon zero dou E over dou T. Here M is the magnetic polarization and P as before is the electric polarization. We rewrite this equation as del cross 1 by mu 0 times B minus del cross M this is equal to Jf plus dou over dou T times epsilon 0 E plus P. This is del cross 1 by mu 0 times B minus M. This is equal to Jf plus dou d over dou t where d is the electric displacement vector. We shall take 1 by mu 0 b minus m as h and hence the Ampere's law becomes del cross h equal to jf plus dou d over dou t where h is 1 over mu 0 b minus m and d is equal to epsilon 0 e plus p. We have seen that as before the term h has absorbed the effect of the bound current density Jb. The Ampere's law now consists only of the free current density. Inside a linear media, the polarization is dependent only on the external field E through constants epsilon 0 and chi E, where chi E is the electric susceptibility. Now the magnetic polarization M is dependent on the external field H over chi M which is the magnetic susceptibility. Therefore the electric displacement vector D would be epsilon 0 E plus epsilon 0 chi E times E and this is equal to epsilon 0 times 1 plus chi e times e this is again equal to epsilon times e where epsilon equal to epsilon 0 times 1 plus chi e is known as the permittivity of the material now h is equal to 1 over mu 0 times b minus chi m h when we rearrange this equation this is 1 plus chi m times h equal to 1 over mu 0 times b and this gives us h as equal to 1 over mu 0 times 1 plus chi m times b and this is equal to 1 over mu times b where mu equal to mu 0 times 1 plus chi m is the permeability of the dielectric media. Inside matter the Maxwell's equation becomes del dot e equal to 
row f and then del dot b equal to 0 del cross e equal to negative of dou b over dou t and then del cross h equal to jf plus dou d over dou t. If we assume that the dielectric does not contain free charges or free current, in that case the first equation becomes del dot d equal to 0. The second and the third equations remains the same and the fourth equation becomes partial d over partial t. So these are the equations inside matter which is devoid of any free charges or free currents. Thus we have seen that if the medium is linear, we have the electric displacement d as equal to epsilon times e and h as equal to 1 over mu times b. And therefore, for linear media, Maxwell's equation becomes del dot E equal to 0 and then del dot B equal to 0, del cross E equal to negative of dou B over dou T and del cross B equal to mu epsilon then dou E over dou t. We see that these equations are analogous to the vacuum equations and the only difference is that we have replaced epsilon 0 mu 0 by epsilon mu. The electromagnetic waves evidently propagate through linear homogeneous media at speed v equal to 1 over square root of mu epsilon and this in terms of the refractive index can be written as c over n. The refractive index is defined to be square root of mu times epsilon over mu zero epsilon zero. For most materials we can take mu very close to mu zero so that the refractive index can be approximately written to be square root of mu zero epsilon over mu zero epsilon zero. The two mu zeros get cancelled so that this equation becomes square root of epsilon over epsilon zero and this can be written as epsilon r which we call as the dielectric constant of the material. Now for the propagation of electromagnetic waves through linear media, all the previous results that we derived for propagation through vacuum carry over with a simple transcription of epsilon 0 to epsilon, mu 0 to mu and c to v. Now the energy density can be written as u equal to 1 by 2 epsilon 0 e square plus 1 over mu b square the pointing vector s as 1 over mu then e cross b the frequency and the wave number are related by omega equal to k times v the magnetic field and the electric field are related through 1 by v and the intensity i is equal to 1 over 2 epsilon v e0 square.